Today on Q&A Mondays, we're talking about design considerations for standing seam metal roofing. Anything from the look to the location. Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett with Sheffield Metals. Today we're talking about design considerations for standing seam metal roofing. Check out the description. There's links down there. You can jump ahead to any of the questions that we're going to answer in this episode. Today I've got Julianne Calipa, Lori Reynolds Morrow, and Jeff Hawk on the panel with me today. And we're in a really good conversation because design considerations, that touches a lot of a lot of bases. So first, what we're gonna do is, is have a comparison between mechanical lock standing seam metal roofing and snap lock standing seam metal roofing and how um, those can vary between what you would choose for different types of designs. So let, let's talk about paint first. When it comes to mechanical lock versus snap lock, do those kind of dictate what type of finish ends up on your roof? No. Paint systems are going to be the same. Uh, if you pick your paint system, you can use it on either one of the okay. two panel profiles. And there are unpainted products as well, so what about those? Uh, you know, you have bare gabalum, you have copper, you have zinc. Um, none of those have a painted surface as far as a PBDF or SMP finish. So, uh, But again, your copper, your zinc um, are more malleable, so you're going to see them more in mechanical lock panels. Uh, when it comes to acrylic coated gabalum, again, you can use either snap lock or mechanical. So how does geography impact the panel or the material choice? Geography really is going to depend uh, as far as material choice. Uh, in coastal applications, you're not going to want to use steel on the coast if you're right up against the water. Um, most warranties are within 1,500 feet of a coastline. You know, you're not supposed to use steel. So if you're on a coastal environment or a heavy saltwater environment, you're definitely going to want to go with an aluminum system. As far as your panel choice, whether you use steel or aluminum uh, in those coastal environments or any environment, you know, it's going to be what type of engineering do you have available for those panel systems. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure your engineering is applicable. Most coastal environments are high velocity hurricane zones, so you're gonna be dealing with stronger uplifts and things like that. Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure that your engineering is valid for those areas. You know, geography also comes into play when you deal with snow, um, especially on more low slope roof systems that are gonna be holding a lot more of the snow. Um, mechanical locks tend to perform better than snap lock systems because you do have that double folded mm -hmm. seam. Mm -hmm. um, so those are a lot of the you know material choices and uh, geographic locations, but basically you know the two main ones you want to look at geographically is or the three main ones I should say is you know it's cold weather snow, uh, high velocity hurricane zones South Florida, uh, Gulf Coast of Texas things like that, and coastal environments where steel wouldn't be an appropriate material to use in those areas. And we do have a Q and A episode with Tom Sutherland about uh, choosing your material choice and. Uh, we go into detail about aluminum versus steel and what you should be using on the coast and where you should be using it. So check that out right here. So when it comes to roof design, how, what kind of considerations are there for mechanical lock versus snap lock? Uh, slope's going to be a big factor in whether or not you use a snap lock or mechanical lock. Um, typically, industry standard is you don't want to use a snap lock below 312. So anything below a 312, you're going to stick with a mechanical lock. Anything below a 212, you're going to use a mechanical lock with inseam sealant, um, you know, per testing requirements that, you know, they have out there to make sure that they can perform in those kind of conditions. Steep slope, mechanical lock or snap lock would work fine. Again, you always want to check and make sure that the panel you're picking has the applicable engineering for the substrate that you're attaching to, um, you know, for the wind uplifts that you need. So does roof deck choice dictate whether you should choose mechanical lock or snap lock? No, it does not. Um, they, they, can, they can accommodate either mechanical or, or snap lock either. Um, what, what drives it is the engineering requirements for that particular project. If you have a good pitch on your roof, then you just want to make sure that the panel you pick has the type of engineering needed for the deck assembly that you're going to be installing it on. Okay. So what if your building doesn't have a deck? What if you're installing over open framing? Mechanical lock, typically your two inch mechanical and greater than a mechanical lock type panel is going to be the most popular choice for going over open mm -hmm. framing. It's a structural panel, it's what it's designed to do. 
Um, there are some snap lock panels that can accommodate over open framing, but it really depends on the purlin spacing and uh, whether or not that panel has been engineered again to go over that type okay. of system. You know, one of the things with me and snap locks and open framing, especially when you get into further purlin spacings, is I am counting on that one little lip of metal that engages the snap lock to keep me from the ground below. And uh, I, I, you know, I prefer that double yeah. seam a lot better than, uh, you know, a little tab of metal. So what are some potential problem areas when you're designing a roof? Probably the biggest one that we come across is dead valleys, mm -hmm. where you have a slope pitching down into a wall and there's no way for the water to escape. And it's just going to pond there. The, um, there's nothing good about that. That's going to create problems. Water's going to back up. It could cause leaks. It could cause early corrosion and deterioration. Um, mm -hmm. There has to be a way to get that water off the roof system. So that's probably number one. There's, there's ways you can do it with cricket systems, uh, depending on how big the dead valley is. Um, tying in TPO into the metal roof system and creating a TPO section. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. It really depends on what that area looks like. Real, real low slopes. Um, we don't recommend with any of our panel systems. Um, well, we have one panel system and the lowest it can go depending on certain configurations of the roof is a half 12. Mm -hmm. um, there's some you know panel systems out there that can go down to a quarter 12, but you're getting seriously flat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and depending on how long the run is and everything else, you know, it could, it could, might not be able to shed water fast enough to get off the roof right. system. Mm -hmm. um, Leaving it ponding. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, projects with multiple penetrations, large penetrations um, that are scattered throughout the roof system. Um, again, problem, I would say potential problem just because there's a multiple of them. You know, the more penetrations you got, the more chances you have for something to go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, intersecting roof planes that aren't, that may look good on paper, but when it comes to actually building them, it's like, what am I going to do now? Yeah. And that's what's great. If we're called in early, early design, you know, we can avoid all the energy being put into that design and it turns out they've pushed the envelope just a little too far. You know, we, we can support them that way, give them some guidance without maybe not compromising their very own creative design. We can work with them for yeah. that. You know, the other one I guess I would throw in is when you come into um, people wanting to use other products in the roof systems. Um, you know, when we talk about gutters, you know, you know, real quick, we'll talk about internal gutters. When you have an internal gutter system, whether it's in the center of the roof to catch water or if it's just built in and you have an internal gutter system, it's easy for something to get blocked and water to back back up on the roof. Or with a gutter system and it's like, hey, I really like copper gutters on my you know, on my house. Mm -hmm. And that's a dissimilar metal. And, you know, as the rain comes in, it splashes up and you get dissimilar uh, copper runoff onto your metal panels. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of things that go into it. Uh, it's always good to contact your manufacturer or a design professional when you're looking at you know, and get in a metal roof installed or deciding a building from the ground up. And that's a great point too. If you're designing a roof and you have any questions when it comes to design or you have some considerations or you're running into any problems, Jeff and Lori does a great job with our architectural and technical department as well as Dave Stubbs. They'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Check us out at Sheffield Metals online, sheffieldmetals.com. You can find all the contact info there. Subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel. Comment below with any questions you'd like answered on Q&A Mondays. Anything else, like I said, check out Sheffield Bells online. We'll catch you next time.